Goldeneye, a James Bond film that came out in 1995. It was directed by Martin Campbell and it stars Pierce Brosnan in his first outing as James Bond. The previous Bond starred Timothy Dalton. It was called Licence to Kill and that was 1989 when that came out so there had been a, a massive six year gap between that film because of um, production problems and stuff. So in 1995 they needed a, a special Bond film to bring uh, fans back to the, the series. It's good that they chose Martin Campbell to be the director because he's, he's probably the best um, Bond director I think. This film's good and he also did um, Casino Royale which are classed as the best Bond film ever. Goldeneye cost 60 million to make in 1995 so that was a heck of a lot of money it brought back 352 million so it was very successful right the, the good points is um, Pierce Brosnan looks the part he, um, w when you look at him you automatically think he's James Bond so that's good he's not as good as Radio Mower Pierce Brosnan was lucky in this film because um, the whole production as a whole was top notch. You had um, a very good Bond girl that had a chemistry between them. She was really good in the film. But also the, the villains were good as well. Alex Trevelyan and also Zena on top of. <laughs> on the top. <laughs> so they, they, they were really good as well. Some good funny scenes with them too. I thought Judy Dench was good as M. It was her first film as well in the role and um, there's a great scene in the office between her and Bond. She calls him uh, an old dinosaur. There's also a funny scene with Bill Tanner where he's uh, calling the new M and he doesn't realise she, she's uh, behind him. <laughs> so that, that was really funny that say. There's a great um, bit where right at the beginning of the film Bond's on a dam and he, he jumps off it. It's, a, it's an excellent stunt. I don't think there was any CGI involved. I think it was done for real. There might have been a, a little tiny bit. But really impressive that stunt. It um, sets the scene for the film. It was nice to see Desmond Llewellyn as Q. It brought continuity still with the other Bond films because this was a very fresh film and there was a lot of new new um, elements to it. It was nice to see something old from the past so uh, it was nice to see him. Fortunately you know he, he was showing his age he was very old at the time and there's some scenes where you can tell he's looking past Bond and he's like looking at a cue card knowing what to see so his memory mustn't have been very good with his lines. Matt and Campbell did some excellent action sequences he's very good with action. Um, the tank sequence that, that's a standout it's very funny when um, it goes through this monument and there's like a horse that drops on top of the tank so there's a lot of sequences where the tank's going around with this um, statue of a horse. So we've heard a lot about statues this year, haven't we? <laughs> so yeah, it was a really good uh, sequence that. The film has some stunning locations and um, all the girls in the film look stunning really bunny. Also the final fight between Alex Trevelyan and Bond. It's like an enclosed space. It reminds us of the train fighting from Russia We Love where there's two guys having a real go at each other. It's quite brutal. Now I'll talk about the parts that I wasn't too keen of in the film, the bad points. Bad music at times, um, it doesn't quite sound right. Um, the 
car chase at the beginning. Awful music. I thought the character of Boris was annoying as well. I didn't like it, him very much. I thought Money Penny was cold. She didn't work very well either. At times there's um, some poor CGI and model work in the film and some uh, bad back projection. Some of the technology looks a bit dated as well, like the computers that they use. And I think altogether the film hasn't aged very well. When it first came out it was fresh. Um, people had had a six year gap and they were really excited to watch it. But now um, now that time's gone on, you, you can look at the film in a different way and it's not really one of the best to, to be honest. I actually prefer Piers Brosnan in The World Is Not Enough. That's an underrated Bond film and I think it's a lot better than this one. I think the film, I think Piers Brosnan, um, I think he's trying to emulate the success of Roger Moore. He's playing the role like, sort of like light and funny like Roger did instead of dark and gritty like the Daniel Craig type of films. So he was trying to get away from how Timothy Dalton played Bond so he was trying to bring humour and make it a bit more fun and campy. It kind of proves um, how good a job Roger Moore did uh, playing Bond. It, it's not easy to bring humour into the role. I actually think it's easy for actors to play the role dark because um, being funny it's difficult and I, I think um, they maybe thought they could easily duplicate the Roger Moore films with this one but the, it turned out that they couldn't quite do it. It wasn't easy. Pegasus doesn't seem to have the, the ability to do that type of acting. He looked too young. James Bond has to be an old fart. <laughs> I could have bit the bugger in a fight. So, Another thing about this film, and I, I used to always rate it really high, I used to always give it 10 out of 10, and it was, it was always kind of in my top 10. But now uh, the mark's dropped a little bit, I'm not quite sure if it's because I've seen the film a lot. I wonder if that uh, makes it a bit more boring when you watch something too much. Anyway, out of 10. Um, Right, I'll, I'll rate this film, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's still a 10. It's an entertaining film. I wouldn't kind of put it in my top 10 though. Top 10 bun films, I'd put it sort of like... Um, I think I'd put it underneath Dr. No. I thought Dr. No, although that's about an 8 out of 10. I, I think Dr. No is slightly better. So what did you think, Bones? Did you like it? Hey, he looks softy shit as Bones. Okay, bye, bye.